Good afternoon and welcome to the Idle Hands Workshop. I'm Stephen and this is your first time here. Welcome to the Idle Hands Workshop. Um, a lot of people have been contacting me lately. They're still having problems getting their Viver S4040 set up. Uh, so I know one of the things is going to be software right off the bat because what's installed on it and what comes with it is just absolute crap. And it doesn't work. So, we're going to start there. I'm going to assume that you have managed to assemble your machine correctly. I know I went through that when I did my unboxing and assembly. So, the next thing we need to address is going to be the software we use to control it. And for that, what we're going to use is G-Sender. So, open up your browser, whatever you use, and just type in G-Sender. And it's going to bring you to introducing uh, G Center Science Labs. Click on that. And then what it's going to do is bring you to this little page here. And it gives you the highlights, which we'll go over real quick. First of all, it's free. There's other programs out there like Easel that charge. And if you're a small maker or a hobbyist and you really don't have the money to be spending on software, then this is perfect. Uh, it supports Gerbil, which is what comes on the S4040 already, but we're going to end up flashing that later on. Uh, it connects over USB or Ethernet, which we don't use Ethernet for this. It's USB, and you can connect to your uh, desktop or laptop. I have not tried the wireless control from a second device through a browser, but if it's anything like the 3D printers, that would be really cool to do. And then... Let's see, quickly position your CNC and all axis. This little panel right over here is perfect for that. It lets you uh, jog the spindle around, and you've got three different settings here. Rapid, I think, is 10 millimeters, uh, normal is 5, and then precise, I think, is 0.5 millimeters. Just itty bitty little bit. And you can control X, Y, and Z axis is like that. Uh, preview G-code with 3D visualization and other information and that's what this shows here it'll actually plot out what it is you're going to be cutting and show you where it fits on the board and you can adjust your clamps or whatever as need be uh, run cutting jobs with active feedback and overrides like down here once you get it up and running and connected you can control your spindle speed and other things tool changes uh, Leverage key maps for full keyboard control or use of a joystick. You, yeah, you can program your keyboard however you want. Uh, like for me, I got a Windows PC. Hush, don't want to hear it. And uh, I can hook up an Xbox joystick, program the buttons, and control the CNC that way if I wanted. And much more. Yes, there is much more. Uh, it is pretty clean and easy to use. There is just a tiny bit of a learning curve, but. It, you'd be surprised once you connect how everything kind of clicks when you look at it and it all makes sense. Um, brings new features to the table for easier CNC calibration, surfacing tool changing, firmware control, and more. Firmware control, this up here in the settings gives us the ability to flash the uh, firmware that comes on the S4040 to the current version of Gerbil or gerbil if you want. I don't know what people call it. I call it gerbil. Um, streamline code base and optional lightweight mode. Me, that comes in handy, especially like if you're using a laptop or a Chromebook or something. Uh, presets support many gerbil based machines and work out of the box on the long mill and alt mill CNC's. Uh, it'll even work out of the box on the, uh, you just have to pick like the default machine and it'll work for these as well. Uh, you got Windows, Mac, and Raspberry Pi as well as some others like the Chromebook I mentioned that you can install this on. So for this, for me, I've got Windows, so I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up my download manager and we'll download it real quick. And what that's going to do is trigger this. There we go. It'll take you to documentation to install it and it is fully loaded. So what you're going to do is 
follow all these instructions get your updates if there's any and just it's simple and this is going to be the for the Chromebook surprisingly easy I have one I was messing with I didn't actually try and connect it though I was just playing with it so you're gonna follow the instructions for whatever platform you're on and then down here at the bottom it's got a uh, little section for common issues that you can look at but so assuming that you are able to download that the next thing you want to do is install it you know once you get it installed you're gonna come back and we're gonna fire it up hopefully mine won't take forever sometimes it lags on loading sometimes it doesn't um, I'm actually in the house because I feel like crud and yeah I can't hardly breathe everybody's like oh you got COVID COVID uh, COVID 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 25 I'm like yeah you can bite me but uh, so I'm inside it's actually cold out it's been down getting down to freezing at night there we go it's firing up so it says we are disconnected let me see if I can power on my yeah it looks like it will I am using my laser engraver at the moment to uh, connect to just so we have a reference to look at uh, oh we, we have an update I'm not gonna bother with that at the moment uh, you when you download if you're watching this and you follow the instructions and download it you should be able to uh, get the latest version so I'm not gonna worry about the update at the moment we'll get rid of that um, things to look at um, like I said up here at the top well first thing we're gonna do is I already showed you if you've got your CNC hooked up to your computer by the USB and you open this up you can come up here to connect to machine and it should show you like my uh, laser engravers on comp 7 it's using Gerbil. It's got the baud rate set nice and high. So I can click on that to connect to it. If you do not see your machine listed here, then you need to go back, use the uh, flash drive that came with your CNC, and locate the USB drivers. They're like cheese or something is what it looks like. And install those close out G Center, open it back up and then come back here and try and connect if you get to where you can see your machine it won't say what it is it'll just show a port you're looking for a used gerbil which coincidentally is what my laser engraver uses so this works so we're connected it'll tell you it's connected it's idle and all that so the next thing I want to do is I want to play around and try and move my spindle head around and it does it on the laser engraver so that's pretty cool and you can see as I click here on the X and the Y how it's moving in the visualizer window how it's moving the cutting head around So that makes it nice. Uh, if you're doing rapid or whatever, or you change your travel distance down here in this section, down here, and like if you've got it going 50 millimeters and you need to stop, oh wait, I went too far, you can click the red button in the middle. Your three settings you got here, rapid, I believe default is like really quick 10 millimeter jog normal is 5 millimeter and precise is like 
0.5 millimeters, just barely even moving it. Um, the probe. Forget about the stupid probe. You're not going to need that. When we get outside in the shop, when weather prevails, we'll uh, go over how to set everything. Because what we're going to end up doing is we're going to move our cutting head to the corner, bottom left corner of our workpiece. And now we're going to set our Z axis to just half a millimeter or a millimeter below the surface of our material. And we're going to go from there. We're going to come up here. We're going to zero everything. And now we're going to start our cut. And that's how we're going to do it. You don't need the probe. It's an extra step you don't need to worry about. So this is just a basic tutorial on hopefully getting you connected and showing you some of the things. Now, I don't necessarily want to do this on my laser engraver because I haven't tried using G Sender. I use Laser Gerbil, which is pretty much the same thing, it appears. But you can click on firmware. And uh, it's going to bring up your this drop down. And what you want is, where is it? Generic CNC. And then connect on last active port and it gives you the this is what your gerbil settings are you can actually go ahead and edit the settings if you want but right out of the box you do not need to mess with any of this um, like I said we're just trying to get connected at the moment if you really are having problems connecting and you've got it hooked up and it's showing you know, COM7, using Gerbil, whatever. Come in here into settings, or into firmware, and then you're going to want to hit the flash Gerbil. And that's going to rewrite the software inside that big black box to the latest version of Gerbil. So, that's what we're, that's the goal of this and on that I'm kind of gonna leave you hanging because I need to take you out in the shop and show you actually how this all works on the uh, CNC itself and what it does um, actually we can do this as well well you're looking at all my stuff hang on let me see if I can Get this now. Let me get a file up here on the desktop that we can. Uh, I want. As you can tell, I'm a little disorganized on this. This is actually like my third or fourth time trying this. So. Uh, I want, where are all my G codes? There we go. We'll take that one. Move it up here. Alright, so, quick look in my goodies box. Not really in there. So, yes, I play Battlefield from time to time. So, by default, it's not going to recognize the files we create later on in, uh, Inkscape, which will be another tutorial. Um, so you're going to go down here and click on all files. Now oh, it's going to show you my 3D files that I've been working on as well for my models. Yes, I like Jägermeister. But the one I got up here is Gingerbread Men. Now this piece is designed to go on some Dollar Tree craft pieces that I found. They're rectangular and this setup will let me cut out two of them and then the reason I wanted to bring this up is show you the visualizer how it works and if you click this it actually switches it to the top view and you can see exactly this is your cutting head here and if we 
it home, it takes it back home. You can also uh, right click, you know, and move it around. Um, if you do happen to set your work piece up, you know, the bottom left corner is zero, that's fine. Um, I don't do that, I just jog it out a little bit. But you can use your scroll function on your mouse if you have it to zoom in and out. Let's see how close it'll let me get. Because you can see this is what it's actually going to do is make two passes around this gingerbread man to cut it out. You can make thinner lines. I use sketchy materials all the time like the Dollar Tree craft pieces that seem to be pretty decent plywood but you never know. You never know what's inside. But again you can use your X and Y to move it along. So let's see for instance say that I had this set to go off my workpiece and you go a little bit more that way. Now I'm going to click on precise and I can jog it back over. And you're looking at this little gray dot. That's actually going to be your uh, cutting bit. So then I'm going to want to bring it down here. Okay, so that looks that looks about right. So up here, you can see the numbers don't match up. We're not zeroed out. So I'll click on zero. It sets it all to zero. Now it knows I can go to X, Y, zero, theoretically. Oh, it may not work. Oh, it did. Okay. It was already there. It reset everything. So now this is my zero. And it'll go through here. And do my cut. Now when it's time to cut, if you're ambitious and everything seems to be working right, you can go ahead and click Start Job. Um, if you're sketchy on whether or not your G code is going to work, you got it from someplace you don't know, click on Verify Job. And here you can see it's going to run around and actually pretend to do a cut. Does it real quick. Outline. Oops. Yep, I just crashed it. It went, wanted to go too far because this is bigger than my laser engravers area. But to fix that, See how easy that was? Clear the error out. Just hit the click to rehome button. It's it, it's really that simple. So, yeah, I know I talked on long enough. So I will go ahead and leave you with this. Try and get this posted. Hopefully this will help some of you out. I'll go in more in depth when, hopefully when the weather changes and I can get out in the shop. Because like I said, it is freezing cold out lately. I've got the crud and it just, is not good for me right now can I afford to get sick got to go to work and all that stuff so in the meantime comment down below if you need help with anything um, like I said I assume that you assembled your machine correctly if not go back watch my vi unboxing video and assembly if that still doesn't help you put it together right comment down below and I'll try and go back I've actually got a whole nother chassis we can put together uh, my black box went out and Beaver just sent me a whole new machine so I have a complete another chassis that we can assemble so in the meantime peace love and go make something <laughs>